Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me again today. Guys, I don't know how else to say it other than you already know what's going to happen. So, um, if you're squeamish at heart, <laughs> you already know this ain't going to be the one for you. Um, so, hey, Corso, man. It's finna get ugly. All right, let's get it. Like I said, this is your chance to go ahead and back out of here, man. If you uh, if you get a, if you get butt hurt easily or anything like that, because uh, I think everybody about to get some of this. So uh, let's start off, man. Defense, first of all, even though it wasn't perfect, defense played well enough to get the win yet again, and yet again. That shit did not happen um, for a multitude of fucking reasons, man. So, hey, I can't shoot this shit from the hips. I got notes and a lot of them. So let's get into it. And I'm we're going to start off on the easy side, man. You know, oh, man. Kendall Dolby, dude. You spend most of your game on the sideline getting your ass chewed. Every time I looked up, BV had your ass right there, man, going in on you. Um, you look lost. I just don't understand why that continues to be the case. Um, man. Anyway, Jaron Canick, man. We know that you don't have Danny out there to help you you know, decipher these offenses and shit. But OSU wasn't running nothing that damn complicated, man, compared to UCF and Kansas. We already talked about this. Uh, you continue to regress, my guy. I don't know why that is. And, uh, you know, I don't want to hear shit from the gooch lickers out here talking about, oh, it's because he's busy doing podcasts and videos and shit like that hell man when i get through when i hit stop on this record button guess what i'm gonna go back to my normal life and it ain't gonna affect it in no way no shape form or fashion none of that shit so i don't want to hear that weak ass mental shit man these guys all have different outlets that they have to have in life you, you can't expect these guys to wake up and do football in the morning football in the afternoon football in the evening with no damn outside outlet He's not he's not making a damn podcast and then forgetting how to play linebacker. It just don't work that way. It didn't seem to be affecting Danny Stutzman, did it? So yeah, I don't want to hear that weak ass excuse. It ain't got shit to do with that. Some of these guys, you know, they they play video games in their downtime. Some guys chase girls. Um you know, some guys rather, you know, try to make a podcast, you know, do some NIL type of shit. So I don't want to hear all that bullshit. Just like us, as outsiders and out here in this real world, you know, we come home from work, we we allowed to do whatever the hell we want to do. But guess what? When it's time to go back to work, we go back to work. So I don't want to hear that shit, that weak ass shit out of here. Um, man. With that being said, I don't know what the damn solution is uh, for you, Jerry. Um, 
We know you got all the talent in the world. But man, dude, you you gotta you gotta be where you gotta be, man. Come on. Shit. And no doubt, I mean, we know, man, it's 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 tough, man. It's tough. You know, but at the end of the day, unfortunately, this is what you signed up to do. You wanted to play for BV, you got it. So now, man, you gotta figure that shit out. Hmm. I mean, I don't know if we, I, I mean, I don't want to see you get replaced, but I mean, hell, if you can't, if you can't play the, play the position like he's supposed to, man, I mean, I don't know what the fuck you want him to do. You're going to have to put Kip Lewis and Kip, Kobe McKenzie in there. I mean, shit. I don't know, man. I don't know. Brent Venables, dude. You know I love I love you, Brent. I really do. I think you the guy to to take us where we need to get. Um, but um, I and I'll I'll admit it right now. If I was you, I probably would have went to jail yesterday with some of the calls that was being made or not made. Um, but you can't go out here and get penalties, man. Just the second week in a row that a coach has cost us fifteen yards, man. And whether you was cussing at the referee or not, you got to know that these boys are out here to try to fuck us over, man. They already stated that shit, and now we seeing it play out. You know, we've been seeing it, but on a much larger scale yesterday. So, I don't know. I mean, I would much rather you wait until the press conference after the game and then go in there and motherfucking just get that fine. I know I would. I mean, shit. If I was making that kind of money, I'd be like, well, here. Let me write the check because I'm about to let some pe- let some people know what time it is out here. So, I don't know, man. But one thing's for sure, you better get these coaches, take their ass in that conference room, sit them down, and demand some damn answers, man. Because the majority of this shit that's going on is unacceptable and unexplainable. You need to start letting these coaches explain to you why the fuck certain players are coming in the game that ain't been in the game or in any game (laughs) all year. You know, some of the decision making is just, I mean, you can't even wrap your fucking head around it, man. Damn. Mm. Snatch a knot in one of these motherfuckers, man. Now let's get to our favorite guy. Oh, Jeffrey, I told y'all me and Jeffrey, we like this. That shit is coming unraveled. We, uh, me and Jeffrey finna have a falling out. Um, you know, here we go again with the same bullshit, Jeff. I mean, what, what is it going to take to get Jeff to call a fucking sequence that makes sense, man, on any given drive? He'll come out, call a good play, turn around. And you'll, in the next play, the very next fucking play, you'll be like, what the fuck? What is he doing? And this happens throughout the whole fucking game. You and your fucking jet sweeps and your, and your freaking lateral and horizontal damn passing game, man. What the fuck, bro? That shit ain't working, man. I mean, I don't, I don't understand what the fetish is, man, with that bullshit. I mean, you you get a positive play, or hell, even a negative play. You don't give a damn either way. Sometimes just shit is minus two yards, second and twelve, and somehow your brain tells you that it's okay to come out here with some trick play or some fancy little cute ass play that results in a fucking turnover or fumble. What the fuck are you doing, man? I mean, it's real simple. All BV got to do is sit there and go, hey, you know what? If I was a defensive coordinator going up against Jeff, I would shut that shit down so easily. Because all you got to do is be a good tackling team. We throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage, just come up and tackle us. It's just that simple. It ain't, it ain't that hard to stop this offense. Even though they successful by the numbers, our play sequence is fucked off, man. It makes no rhyme or reason. 
I never hang out with OSU fans. Yesterday, I decided to go to a watch party, and it was about, oh, six or seven OSU fans there. And, uh, you know, of course, they're not as passionate about football as we are. And they, they, they had to think that I was losing my damn mind. Yeah, man. I mean, basically, you out here playing that beta male bullshit ball, man. What the fuck is that shit, man? Cut that shit out, Jeff. Ooh, we. I mean, a few people thought I was coming down too hard on you last time, man. But, I mean, shit, man. I mean, every game, man, the last three games especially, it's like you getting worse by the game. Like you intentionally trying to dick us down yourself. All right, let's flip this shit over. Um, and it just, and it just ain't even that damn hard, man, to look down there and see the down and distance, man, and go, you know what? I could run this play, but that ain't going to really get me the first down. Why don't I run something that's going to at least get to the fucking sticks, man? Can you, can you run some? If you need six yards, can you run something at seven, maybe eight yards? Give the receiver a little wiggle room. We got two receivers on this team, man that you can throw the ball short of the damn line the game and they can possibly get you that first down. That's Farouk and Nick Anderson. Stoops, small guy. Uh, Freeman, small guy. And y'all don't use Stogner, so he ain't even part of the fucking options. I just don't understand why we keep making it easy for these sorry-ass teams to defend us, man. Teams that shouldn't have not a prayer, <laughs> not no hope. And stopping us. It's stopping us. All because you continue to make this shit just super ultra fucking easy for them to do it. Like I said, all you gotta do is be able to tackle. And and, and you know, and what's 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 even more frustrating is like you say, is that you got the fucking nerve to show us glimpses of what it could look like if you ever called this shit good, as you like to say. Looking at your little post game fucking interview again, it was the same old robotic shit. Well, you know, we could we could definitely execute better, and I definitely could call it better. Can you? We still fucking waiting, man. Shit. Ooh-wee. And please explain to me, Jeffrey, what is this fascination, man, with allowing your assistant coaches or whoever the fucking case it is, you keep allowing these guys to bring in guys who haven't played, like I said, at all. J.J. Hester. Bunkley Shelton on the punt return. Javante Barnes. That's already three fucking names, man. That's way too many. I just don't get it, man. Now, I can see if you was down to that's all you had left. But Sacha, Tywee, they they out there. They was doing good. Just said, oh, well, you know what? Yeah, I know that... Uh, they showing out, but fuck that shit. I want to get Javante Barnes in there. Now, I know that BV said that's a DeMarco Murray thing, and trust and believe, we about to get on his ass, too. And and Bill Beanbo, many people consider you one of the best offensive coaches, uh, offensive line coaches in the country. Can you explain to me, sir, why the fuck your center and quarterback can't do a simple quarterback and center exchange? Huh? It's either snap too low in the ground, snap too high over the head, snap snap the ball when he ain't even fucking ready for it, looking off to the side. I mean, me personally, man, I mean, those are unexcusable. Those those are those are even more egregious than some of the other damn bullshit that's going on because uh I mean as soon as we got the ball back, man, the first fucking play of the series, bro. And I know that some of these guys behind you ain't ready to take your motherfucking spot, but I damn sure will give them a try. Because, I mean, what are you, you ain't, you turning the fucking ball over, man. So what's the point? Oh, man.
I mean, that's a basic fundamental, man, of fucking football, man. And I know, yeah, you got to get the line in the proper pr- protection and slide left, slide slide right, you know, all that shit. But damn, man, it's just snapping the ball. We can't be mad at our weak-ass leg kicker for not being able to kick and then not be mad at you for not being able to snap the ball. I mean, I don't know, Bill. I don't know whose ass you need to get in. I don't know if it's Rame's ass or if it's Dylan's ass, but maybe both of their asses. I mean, what... <laughs> What, are, what what's gonna happen, man? Uh, when we get to the SEC next year, now hope. Well, yeah, fuck that shit. Hopefully, Rain he he's gonna be gone, and shit, Dylan to be gone. So we'll see what it looks like next year. But we gotta go down to LSU. We gotta go to Ole Miss next year. I don't wanna hear this bullshit about Stillwater being the the crowd noises. No, you serious? The shit that we finna go play in next year is gonna make that shit look like. Uh, a, a quiet church. But how the fuck do we continue to get wide receivers false start? Huh? Somebody explain it to me. Do you know that on a normal on a normal team in a normal situation, you might see that once every I don't know, maybe ten games, twelve games. That's if you watching different games. We had three. Jaleel Farouk, I'm talking to you, man. We understand you got a little bullshit-ass ticket the other day. That don't mean you should have came out here fucking unfocused. And speaking of your ass, man, when are you going to fucking learn one-on-one in receiving as well, my man? I sat there and watched your ass go down that right side twice. Got behind the dude. Dylan didn't have a strong enough arm to get you the damn ball out in front. You knew you had to come back to the ball. You came back all half-assed, all submissive. All you had to do, man, was stop, turn around, make the defender run into you, and force the referee to call something. Now, whether he would have gave you the actual pass interference or not, we'll never know. Because you half-assed stop and didn't force him to make the call. You finally did it on the left side. But hell, you caught that one. <laughs> Even after getting interfered. Fucking amazing, man. Fucking amazing. Ooh, we. But like you say, you, you ain't... <laughs> You ain't forcing the ref to get you, give you the pass interference. You you false starting. You fumbled the ball as a running back. Your kickoff returns. You don't need to be out there. All those dudes on the sideline that ain't getting used on offense or defense. That's where they should be putting these underused players. We got many of dudes on this team a little bit more dynamic than Farouk. And on top of that, you risk an injury to his ass every time you. Who's the fucking special teams coach, man? What is his name? I don't even know his name. But I already told you, his ass would have got fired last week. Probably before then. And who's, I want somebody to explain to me, who who, who the fuck's call was it to put J.J. Hester in the game? It's, it's like y'all do the exact opposite, man. You know, if J.J. Hester was going to get a shot to play at all this year, it should have been as soon as, is Anthony went out with his injury. You should have had an open competition. Okay, let's see who I'm, who my fast receivers is and who can catch the ball during the game. That's what he should have came down to. But no, nah, once again, this man ain't played <laughs> at all. I mean, I mean, he probably got less than 10 plays since he transferred back here from Missouri. But yet... In the biggest game of the season, you decide to trot him out there. Conference game on the line. Bell and bragging rights on the line. Two losses in the fucking row on the line. But you you, you thought that was a good idea. Okay. Mm. And like I said, I don't know who decided that. <laughs> the special teams coach, man. 
Out of all the guys over there, he chose to pick Bunkley, Sheldon, and try to return a punt. I mean, even if you wanted to say, I want him for his hands, well, his hands wasn't fucking working yesterday because he probably went out there and dropped that shit. And, of course, you know, trying to explain this to OSU fans that are sitting there watching the game as well, they looking at me like, we don't care. <laughs> we do not care. When you try to explain to them that this fool ain't returned a punt this entire year. It's been Gavin Freeman this entire time. But then on the next punt, Gavin Freeman was back in there. Slap yourself twice, sir. And whoever the fuck told you, if you got orders to put him back there, slap that person too. Who we? DeMarco Murray. Look. I've already professed my love for DeMarco Murray to y'all before. I'm not going to sit here and do it again. Um, I just want to know. <laughs> I really just want to know, man, why he felt that it was a good time to put Dalen Smothers in the game yesterday. What? what what was that? We had arguably our best rushing effort from Sawchuck. Well, it ain't even arguably. That was his best rushing effort since the bowl game. And then Tyree comes in on the first carry and gets a touchdown. And then Dale and some others is in the game. What in the fuck? Four, man. When I was calling for his ass a couple of weeks. Look, man, I told y'all, Caden Durham is my cousin, right? It came down between OU and LSU. He picked LSU. But had he picked OU and say, this is next year, I don't want to see his young freshman ass in the game if we got capable running backs already in the damn game. I don't give a damn. And the kicker, I don't have much to say about him other than he still can't fucking kick from the left hash, but somehow that's only something that I observe. That ain't special teams coach. He, he, he don't recognize that, I guess. You know, BV don't recognize that because ultimately at the end of the day, BV can sit there and veto any bullshit that goes on on this team. I don't give a damn whether he wants you to have the responsibility or not. He can still sit there and go, what the hell are you doing? No, sir, we're not doing that. You know what? So that's all the good things. So let's 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 get into the bad things and the and the and the bullshit. What did I say about these fuck-ass teams doing this injury bullshit? Every time we get to play number two or three on the drive, and if we get a first down or two, better believe we ain't finishing that drive without at least one motherfucker laying on the field talking about he's hurt. And then every time what happens, said player, look up, he's back in the fucking game. In no time. Running around. Healthier than a bitch. That is the type of shit that I know for a fact that I would get a 15-yard penalty for. Without a doubt. Because I would be losing my damn mind. So, <laughs> these refs, right? Let me just give you the motherfucking rundown. So, you had the bad passing of friends call on Macari Vickers. That was some bullshit. We all know that. Whatever. Bad calls are going to be part of the game. You can live with some of them. Some of them make you want to physically hurt somebody. <laughs> you know. And that and that actual pass interference is what led BV to getting his damn uh, penalty. You know. I mean, basically, man, the refs. They fucked us, man. And and they didn't even use no Vaseline. Yeah. Just straight up. No Vaseline. And without a doubt. 
one of the worst and most egregious pass interferences I have ever seen in my damn days of watching college football was what they did to Drake Stoops, man. I I, I had a word I was going to use right there, but I can't use that word. <laughs> but, man... I need I need I need somebody to explain to me how the fuck you can tackle a guy, drag him to the ground. Not just grab him and hold him. Grab him and take him to the ground. And it was not even up for debate. They wasn't finna call shit. I mean that that was a life altering epic dig down of epic proportions and we already know that this old raggedy decrepit ass commissioner of ours he already said he was gonna fuck us he had already said that i just didn't think he was gonna fuck us in broad daylight he didn't even bother to turn the lights off man he was trying to fuck us with the lights on man who's who, who still do that now, listen, we about to get into <laughs> the segment where some of y'all might get upset. But uh, I don't give a damn. This segment is for the fans, man. Fans of OU, fans of OSU. You know, it's a lot of gooch licking OSU fans out here. Like I said, them boys ain't had very much success if any, against us, because uh, I don't call that bullshit that they done done <laughs> in these 100-plus games success. So let me just say this shit right now. I do not want to hear no bullshit, whether it's from fans, content creators, coaches, players. I don't want to hear shit about the refs didn't cost us the game. Are there plays, turnovers, decisions that are made that affect the game? Yes. There is also bullshit-ass calls from the reps that affect the game. All of that shit is equal. Some of it more than others, depending on the time and then where it's at. That passing in friends on Drake Stoops, that shit wasn't at the 50-yard line. That shit wasn't on, our, on, the, on the opposite side of the field. That shit was in the end zone going in for a fucking touchdown. And you going to sit here and try to tell me that that shit don't matter? Kiss my ass. You know what? Something else just popped in my head. Man, what the fuck was Keith Lawrence doing yesterday? Oh. <laughs> Ooh, wee. I don't know how I forgot about you, man. Ooh. That was. Yeah, you deserve to get yanked, bro. You deserve to get yanked. I understand you want to get the team hype and be the vocal leader like that shit you was trying to pull out there at Kansas. But like I told you before, you was up there, you were saying all the right things, but you wasn't backing it up with your play. And then you had the fucking nerve to come into the game yesterday and continue not to back this shit up. Another player that's been at Oklahoma too motherfucking long. For that kind of shit to be allowed to happen. And 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 these Gucci lickers out here, they want to say, oh, well, they should be able to overcome the referees. What? No, man, fuck that. Do y'all not understand if we would have got the passing their friends call, we probably go ahead and at least put the pressure on OSU to make the drive to go win the game instead of us being the dude and our defense had bailed us out many a times during that game so anybody that's still running right here saying that shit man you already know what you can go do you already know osu fans yes y'all got pimp slapped by south alabama but we all know that that was that was when ollie gordon wasn't getting the rock and we all know that that's when uh gundy was still playing quarterback roulette so and he wants to get all his praise and all his congratulations for the wonderful coaching job that he's done, you know, here in the in the back half of the season. 
but he's also the same motherfucker that put you <laughs> in that ass whooping that South that Alabama gave y'all. You know? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I know y'all talking big shit, man. But y'all motherfuckers got 20 wins out of 100 plus games, man, that we done played 20. And now y'all can go talk shit. Just keep in mind, though, when you talking that shit, that y'all done went out there on that field and took back shots 91 motherfucking times against us. Yep, just out there taking back shots. Mm. Gundy got four wins, man, since 2005. Four. And this mullet-wearing motherfucker's got the nerve to act like, like, like he's doing something over here. To my fellow content creators, man, I seen some disheartening shit last night as I sat down and cut on YouTube. I understand that you you guys was making videos right after the game. Some of y'all was emotional. You was pissed off. Same reason why I got my little self-imposed ban that I don't make any videos right after the game. Because this is, yeah, this is me on a fucking... Three, you know, yesterday evening, oh, I was all a 10, bro. I had to take a few extra shots. You can go back and look on my channel. I made a video a while back called Show These Guys Some Love. And it was just a tribute to the other content creators, you know, out here covering OU. And I really, you know, wanted to show my appreciation, man. And, uh, and I mean that shit, you know, truly, I really do. I think that without a doubt, we still have the best content creators for any team in this damn country. But um, I was watching uh, a channel last night. They went on and on about this player fucking up, that player fucking up. And so I just sat back and waited and watched. I said, wait, wait a minute. This shit is about to wrap up and this motherfucker ain't yet mentioned the dick down that Levy did to these boys. You cannot, after a game like that, do a segment about the game and not bring up Jeff Levy. You, sir, slap yourself. And I mean, slap it, slap yourself with meaning. Unacceptable. I mean, this this loss goes all the way from Brent Venables to the players to the coaches. Everybody had a hand in this bullshit. Nobody is safe. So, man, to wrap this shit up, man, I got one more question. Is it time for the Jackson Arnold era? Is it? I got mixed feelings about the shit. You know, on one hand, I kind of want to see DG go ahead and try to get us to the 10 and 2 mark. You know, just so, you know, it'll, it'll just look better. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, we out of the playoff picture, damn near out of the conference picture. So when the other side of me is saying, hey, man, fuck this shit. Let's go and get ready for next year. Now, <laughs> if we make that call, like I said, as good as Jackson is and, and as good as he's going to be. If we was to make that move, we also have to be prepared to take a couple more losses, though. Now, would we be able to handle a couple more losses? I don't know about you, but y'all see, I'm struggling out here. But at the same time, I would much rather see Jackson hit the ground running next year, our first year in the SEC, other than, you know, the alternative, which is, oh, Jackson Arnold is making his first start ever. That ain't going to be good, man. And basically what that means is that we pretty much go into the season knowing we're going to lose at least one, two games. Because like I said, I don't, like I said, I ain't seen but one freshman come into college 
and get it done. And that was Trevor Lawrence. And I don't even, I mean, Trevor's okay. I don't really even like Trevor Lawrence. So I'm not tooting his motherfucking horn. So I don't know, man. Some decisions going to have to be made. You know, what they going to do moving forward. I guess all that just to say, either way they go, I mean, it ain't like we got to say in the damn matter. But either way they go, I guess it's going to be okay if they want to continue to try to win with DG. When West Virginia roll they bitch asses in here next week, then hey, okay. If Jackson Arnold tried out there, then we give him our 100% support. And go ahead and get ready for the future. But, uh, see, I mean, now we we trying to figure out the tiebreakers and shit. We know if Texas loses a game somewhere, then that puts us in front of them. But we lost to Kansas, which, you know, now we got two conference losses. They got the tiebreaker over us. It's all fucked up, man. It's all fucked up. So, we'll just see, man. So, thank y'all for listening to me, bitch and moan. Second week in a row. Shit. Sipping sooner. I'm out of this bitch. Peace.